All right, if you remember yesterday, now again, for those people who are tuning in the first time, this is a speech given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe 30 years ago, very shortly before he had his stroke, which made it impossible for him to speak. And <clears throat> it made it impossible. So these, the, with the whole series, of speeches that he gave each and every Shabbat. So these are considered to be the instructions to his Hasidim to bring Mashiach actually really. And of course, the, 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 the Lubavitcher Rebbe himself, he is the Mashiach of the generation. And some, in other words, the Mashiach is already here, but we just have to somehow or other reveal the Mashiach. And mostly what we have to change is our attitude and our way of looking at the world. And our, um, how do you say, our, our uh, uh, paradigms, what's the most important thing to us? So the Raymond wants to say, no, to bring Mashiach is most important. There's nothing more important than that, but it has to come into every detail of our lives. And it is, in fact, being re in every detail of the world. And we can see how this is reflected. Mashiach, the coming of the Mashiach, the perfection of the whole entire world, that this world becomes a godly place and everyone's potential for good is revealed. We can see hints of this coming from everything. And especially, the and the Rebbe points what they, what they are, what they are. And so especially um, in the Torah, the Torah portion that's read every, every week, this gives us a big hint, a big, I say, message on how to serve the Creator in order to bring Mashiach. In addition to that, also the time of the year, the time of the year, the dates, the day of the week, the days of the week, the holidays that are appearing, and any occurrences that happened in the past in those in this time. Says the Rebbe, this the month of Adar, this month of Adar is just packed, packed with all these messages. <clears throat> what are they? First of all, the month of Adar was the month that Moses was born. The month that Moses was born was very important because Moses is the entirety of all the Jewish people. If there was no Moses, the Jews would have never gotten out of Egypt. They would not have stayed out of Egypt. They would have gone back. They wouldn't have received the Torah. They wouldn't have gone into Israel. They wanted to stay in the desert. <clears throat> Moses, he's the whole entirety of the Jewish people. The fact that he was born means basically the birth of the Jewish people. And you have to remember that when Moses was born, nobody knew he was going to be a big leader. No one realized his greatness. He was a baby, a baby, a one-day-old baby, a one-hour-old baby, a one-minute-old baby. When a, a baby is born, so you don't know anything about him. Just the, But the fact that there could be a Moses is the same thing as the fact there could be the Jewish people. That's the essence of, of Moses, the essence of the Jewish people, <clears throat> that would, to reveal the essence of God. Above any description, above any, that's why Haman hated the Jews, because he couldn't stand this existence of the Jews, and that's why the Jews won, <clears throat> because the existence of the Jews is higher than anything the Jews do, personally, because the Jews had done some pretty heavy sins back then, they ate from the meal of Ahasuerus, they gave up on the on the building of the of the temple, on the, on the future redemption, they gave up the whole thing, and they bowed down to Haman, it says everybody was bowing down to Haman, Haman had a little, little, um, uh, a statue around his neck, and they were bowing down to it. So the Jewish people were not in such good spiritual uh, st state over there. And <clears throat> nevertheless, the fact that, that they, they were Jews, that say the who revealed this fact, was Mordechai. Mordechai was the Moses of that generation. <clears throat> According to this, now we can understand two reasons in our Torah portion why this is the only Torah portion after Moses was born that does not have the name of Moses in it. There's also in, in Deuteronomy, there's also, but De the book of Deuteronomy is just spoken only by Moses. So uh, obviously Moses exists. Okay. So this is the reason why this Torah portion is the only one after the birth, birth of Moses that Moses' name does not appear. <clears throat> Mm 
let's understand this. So there's, there are two reasons are given. One reason is, is because Moses died in this month. He died in this month where this Torah portion is always read. And usually the date that Moses died usually falls out on the date when this Torah portion, is 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 read. Torah Tetzave. And there's another reason it says, because Moses requested from God, which that's in next week's Torah portion, wipe me out of your book. Right? God wanted to, after the Jewish people were, were, served the golden calf, so God wanted to destroy them. And Moses said, if you destroy the Jews, then wipe me out of your book. So God didn't destroy the Jews, but nevertheless, because Moses said it, so God wiped them out of one Torah portion. That's the two reasons why it doesn't appear. It says, really, these two reasons are connected one to the other. The reason that it's not explained, express the name of Moses in our parsha of Tzavim, is because it comes next to the seventh day of Adar. Is not because the Moses died, which that's hinting at the fact that his name is not in the Torah portion. He died. But, says the Rebbe, no, this is not commemorating the fact that his name does not appear, is not commemorating the fact that he died, but it's commemorating the fact that he was born. That's the main reason. Why? He later, because the birth of Moses in the seventh day of other Moses was born on the same date that he died. He died 120 years later, but because the date when Moses was born, this refers on the essence of Moses, which is above any name. Therefore, that's not called the name of Moses, because the name indicates something about the person. And with Moses, they didn't know anything about him. And then Moses, when he was born, nobody knew anything about him. Later, it said, that, uh, right, they would call him Moses because he was pulled out of the water. When was he pulled out of the water? After he was born. Yeah, of course, after he was born, he couldn't be pulled out of the water. He was born. And, his, and, and there was a decree to kill all the Jewish, to kill all the children in Israel, in, in Egypt, I'm sorry. There was a decree by Paro to kill all of the children in Egypt that were born in that year. Stupid decree, but that's a decree. So Moses was born, and his sister, his mother, put him into a, 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 into a little box, and they smeared the box with whatever, and so there was watertight, and they put him in the river. And Paro's daughter saw him there and draw him out of the water, and she called him Moses, Moshe. But before that, they didn't know who he was. He didn't have a name. On the seventh day of Adar, Moses was born. When he was born, he didn't have a name. He didn't even have a personality. Nobody knew who he was. How is Moses referred to in this week's Torah portion? Ata, you. God says you. Namely, your essence. God points to Moses and said, you command the Jewish people. You, the true you, the true essence of Moses is connected to the true Atah, the true essence of God. Right? Every blessing we say, Baruch Atah Hashem. Listen, are you. The word Atah means you is talking about the essence. It's above any name. That's why Moses' name doesn't appear in this week's Torah portion. It does, God refers to him by you, Ata, which is higher than a name. Cave, okay, and since the birth of Moses, namely the essence of Moses, which is above any name, was born on the seventh day of Adar, which that's connected, and the birth of Moses is connected to the Jewish people, as it says that Moses is the Jewish people. You should go over Muslim, that the mazal, that the spiritual luck of the Jewish people, and mazal also refers to the essence of the soul, which it is dripping down of the Jewish people, like it's explained in She'ata, this word ata means the essence of Moses. This is the essence of God. This is the essence of the Jewish people. This draws down the, all these things until the ata tetzaveh means connecting, that it connects the essence of God, the essence of Moses, the essence of the Jewish soul with the Jewish people as they are in the world. That's the essence of the Jewish people. That's what's called this pure olive oil. Okay, and therefore, Moromez's parsha Shekorim B'smichos L'Shiva Ba'adar HaMasirut Nefesh Al Moshe about the Jewish people. Therefore, this Torah portion, <clears throat> which is read in the around the day when Moses was born, this hints at 
the self-sacrifice, the total self-sacrifice of Moses, the total devotion of Moses for the Jewish people. This is the essence of the Jewish people, which is above even the Torah. That's what Moses said. The Jewish people did the worst sin that had ever been done in the history of the world. Never was a sin like this. The ultimate, ultimate sin. They worshiped the golden calf. The Jewish people heard at Mount Sinai the first two commandments directly from God. I am God. Don't worship. I am God that took you out of Egypt. Don't worship any other gods. Anything that did not take you out of Egypt, don't worship it. What did the Jews do? They worshiped the golden calf. And they said, this is the God that took us out of Egypt. That, 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 come on, that's going right, that's spitting in God's face. God took them out of Egypt. He gave them water from a rock, bread from heaven, saved their lives, gave them the Torah, protected them with clouds. God is giving them everything. And what are they, God says, listen, what do I want from you? The Jewish people said, whatever you want, you want us to cut off our legs, we'll cut off our legs, we'll sacrifice, we'll jump in the fire, anything you want, God, anything. God said, okay, just don't worship idols. Eh, listen, uh, maybe ask something else. What's, what, what's going on over here? What happened? All the Jewish people, they participated somehow, either actively or passively, in the worshiping of the golden calf. And God said, I'm going to wipe them all out. And Moses, I'll make you a new nation. You'll be the new nation. Huh? They'll be your relatives. You'll have a better chance with them than, than the Jews. Now look at them just making trouble all the time. Mo, what did Moses say? Listen, God, I know the Jews are the worst Sinners, but if you wipe them out, then wipe me out. Because you're not going to make a new, you have your plans to make a new Jewish people, right? Your new, you plan, but you promise the Jewish people are eternal, eternal people. So you want to make it through me? Sorry, not, not for me. Figure out another plan. Because if you wipe out the Jews, you have to wipe me out. Even these sinners, Moses was praying for them, and they made him so much trouble. And Moses said, I don't care. You're not going to wipe out the Jewish people. Even the biggest sinners, wipe me out from your book. By means of this, Shalom is Karshamo, therefore Moses' name is not mentioned. Elava'ata, just you. This is the essence of Moses, which is above any name. The Indian said, this is especially stressed in the seventh day of Adar when Moses was born. Namely, what? The revelation of the essence of Moses, the essence of the Jewish people, as they are one with the essence of God. Alpiza, according to this, move on, it's understood, Shagamatam, that the reason that we say that Moses said, wipe me out from your book, this is relevant to the token of Inyan Shal Shiva This is the main, this is the main point of the seventh day of Adar that we always read now in this Torah portion or near it. The day that Moses was born, namely the essence of, Bo of Moses, Hakashura, which was connected to the essence of the Jewish people, that this is the reason why. Moses was giving his life for the Jewish people when he said, wipe me out of your book. Why? Because Moses completely ignored all the bad things they did. He only looked at one thing, the essence of the Jews. Katotza as means, as because of this, the name of Moses, in other words, any, how do you say, title of Moses, even his name was not mentioned in this Torah portion. That we read it around his, when his birthday is. Because exactly what it, his name is mentioned, it's above his name, Ata, the essence of Moses, which is above any name. All of this we said before, these are all points which are connected to the birth of Moses and the Parsha of Kitzavah. And in both of them is stressed the essence of the Jewish people. The essence of the Jewish people, because the Jewish people, the essence of their soul, they have the power, the fortitude, the, how do you say, the, 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 the fire to give their lives, to devote all of their will, to sanctify God's name. Mudgash, this is especially <clears throat> in the last days when we see a tremendous Kiddush Hashem. A Kiddush Hashem publicly, by means of a Jewish woman. Okay, now the Rebbe is going back 
to this terrible tragedy that happened in Crown Heights, which is totally not understandable. Uh, in Crown Heights, you know, it's the middle of, of Brooklyn and it's the middle of a black area, the blacks. But they get along fairly well. You know, everyone gets along with everybody else. And more or less, either they ignore each other, everybody has their own lives and they get along with their own life. But there's, there's people say hello to each other, and especially their neighbors and things. But there was one, a, a robber, whatever, he broke into a woman's house I don't know all the details. I think that it was in the daytime. But anyway, he broke into her house and he killed her. He bludgeoned her to death. Killed her. A, a mother for, of children. Said this woman, the, the Rebbe was very, very shaken by this. And he went to her funeral and everything. So this woman, she sanctified God's name. <clears throat> First of all, <clears throat> and Itano Yodea Adma says nobody knows or can really understand when exactly all this pain of the Jewish people is going to end. No one can understand, no one is able to understand at all what exactly is going on over here. Why did God do such a thing? How much more so when it's talking about a young woman, a, a mother of children, that she had to. <clears throat> And now, now these young children, they need their mother. And now they're longing for their mother. <laughs> but, okay, what can we do? Now, this lady was a Jewish lady. She was serving God. She only did good things. And the person that killed her was a, a criminal, a murderer, a disgusting low person that his whole life was just filled with the lowest possible things you could imagine, murder being the lowest of them. And somehow or other, this low criminal, he defeated and killed a woman that was righteous and, and, and only did good. How, how does this exactly work? Uh, you think that a person that does Torah and the commandments and does good things, that should protect, right? That person should protect on him. That, that, that this guy wanted to break into her house, he should break a leg before he came in. He wasn't able to do, all of a sudden have a change of heart. A million things could have happened. Says the Rebbe, we can't understand it. But we cannot, we have to have, what do you say, um, uh, questions to God, but not too much. Therefore, it says, if you say, speak too much, it brings sin, but you shouldn't talk too much about this. Because it doesn't do any good anyway. It just makes you feel terrible. But nevertheless, nevertheless, we have to stress the great, how do you say, sanctification <coughs> and advertising of God's name. And more so, we have to cry out to God. How long can this be? How long is this going to be? The Jewish people are going to suffer for absolutely no reason. And then what, what, what did this lady do? What's the message that this is sending to us? We have to um, request and to demand that God and to do everything that we can that immediately should be the future redemption by means of Mashiach. That then, and as we have to do positive things, that then we'll be, that then we'll see that all these people that died, I mean, this was just one woman you know, we can't, not trying to minimize it. <clears throat> but here we have uh, the whole entire city, the whole the Jewish population of, of, the, the, of the, this, this area of Crown Heights, the whole city was mourning for one woman. In the Holocaust, you had one person mourning for a whole city. <clears throat> How can this possibly be? Wasn't it enough problems we already had in World War II? Enough people died for no reason. What's going on over here? <clears throat> it says, don't worry about it. One day there's going to be the raising of the dead. When there's the raising of the dead, is then, first of all, with the tzaddikim, they'll raise up first. And first of all, will be this woman that, that she was killed just because she's Jewish, that immediately, I mean, this fellow, he didn't break in, he looked for a, a house that had a mezuzah on it, and he broke into that house, that immediately <clears throat> will see her, this lady, 
with her soul and her body, and all the Jewish people that died and were killed in a body shall be together with her family and her children, <clears throat> and she'll continue educating them and grow them to Torah and chupa and the wedding, etc., with happiness and a good heart. <clears throat> First of all, let's understand about the Kiddush Hashem that happened because of this. It's known <clears throat> in many, many cult places mentioned that the <clears throat> great and merit of Jews that died because they're Jews. And especially if it was in public. And especially now, <clears throat> if it was in public and it was done in this neighborhood where the Rebbe is. What's so special about this neighborhood than any other place? It says that in this neighborhood is found the synagogue and the place of learning and the place of good deeds, <clears throat> maybe the, the triple house where there was Torah and <clears throat> Torah and prayer and good deeds of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, that he was the leader of our generation. And as the Rebbe said so many times, the Mashiach of our generation. And by means of this, this made a Kiddush Hashem even more <clears throat> it, it sanctify God's name anywhere. And now you really know that it was done because this lady was a Jew. She died because she was Jewish. That was the only reason. We can add on the tremendous highness and wonder of this sanctifying of God's name that we find by the Beit Yosef. There was a great Jew about 400 years ago. His name was Rabbi Yosef Karo. <clears throat> Rabbi Yosef Karo. He said <clears throat> that Ro Yosef Karo, it says an angel came to him. There's a book called Magid Meshorin. You can buy the book. That there was an angel that spoke to uh, Yosef Karo. And it said he was so high and that God came and promised him that you are going to go to the land of Israel and you are going to be killed al Kiddush Hashem. But afterwards, there was some sort of a reason what it was <clears throat> that whatever it was, he, he didn't learn Mishnayas or whatever, something, something, some small thing that he did which wasn't exactly up to his level, that because of this, he was not merit, he did not merit to give his life for God. And, <clears throat> and this was like a punishment. I, what was the consolation prize that he got? He merited to write the Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch, this is perhaps the most popular book in <clears throat> religious Judaism after the Chumash, the five books of Moses and the Talmud and the Mishnah. Shulchan Aruch, this is the <clears throat> this is the law book that every Jew goes according to. <clears throat> this was written, this was that he wrote this book, this amazing genius book, that is the 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 the, the, the direction book <clears throat> for every Jew in the world was written by Yosef Cairo as a consolation prize. In other words, this improved the world and contributed to blessing in the world and benefited the world less than if he would have given his life for God. <clears throat> this Shulchan Aruch, this is the Mori Haroah, the Kol Bistril. This it tells the Jewish people what to do to all the end of the generations. That we can, and this was the second prize. Now we can understand that the, the merit of the Shulchan Aruch, this doesn't, it's not as great as the great as the uh, accomplishment of sacrificing his life for God. <clears throat> and we can also connect this to what Moses said when Moses said, "Wipe me out of your book." And this is so that Mesirut Nefesh of Moses, that the self sacrifice of Moses was above the whole existence of Moses. How it is with the Torah. The Jewish people, when they worshipped the golden calf. They went against the whole entire Torah. The whole entire Torah was Moses, his accomplishment. That was his crown achievement. Getting the Torah for the Jewish people, bringing God's will into the world. And, Mo, and the Jewish people, they, 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 they transgressed the whole Torah. They worshiped idols. That's going against the whole Torah. What did they have now? The only good thing that was left in Israel was, was the Torah and Moses. 
And the Jewish people are, were out. They went against Moses. They went against the Torah. Moses said, you want to wipe out the Jews, God? Wipe me out. In other words, Moses was saying, the Jewish people and me and my essence are above the Torah. Therefore, Moses was willing to give up on his merit that his name would be written in the Torah, from the whole entire Torah. Why? Because the self-sacrifice that he had for the Jewish people. <clears throat> so we see that his self-sacrifice, it benefited the Jewish people and saved, their, their, saved them all. The highness of the... <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. In addition to the great highness and the amazing holiness <clears throat> and the amazing sanctification of God's name that was done <clears throat> when a Jew sacrifices his life for God, as we saw with, by Beit Yosef and by Moses, Harizeh, but this is especially, <clears throat> we can see this in this lady that was just killed, a young woman, the mother of children. Because Yulavad, Mesir is not show, in addition to her self sacrifice, <clears throat> nevertheless, she also <clears throat> was, had self sacrifice also for her children. And that she left them <clears throat> and left them alone. And who knows the great longing the children have for her mother, especially this mother, that she cared about her children so much. <clears throat> and this Omashira at the Gedolim Vechinochem Achareim, Gedulam, and she left the raising of these children and their education to other people. And even more, that the <clears throat> <clears throat> and the self-sacrifice of her children, this is a self, this is a level of self-sacrifice which is even greater <clears throat> than her self-sacrifice. And now they're left without a mother. So automatically, this is a Masir's Nefesh, which is above Masir's Nefesh. So what do we see? That the whole Torah is God's will. Moses was willing to give his life <clears throat> to save Jews that transgressed on the Torah. He was willing to be wiped out of the Torah. So we see this self-sacrifice is even greater. <clears throat> and in a way, now the, the, the Jewish people, if Moses would have given himself away, then what would the Jewish people have done? The Jewish people would have been without a leader. <clears throat> and their self-sacrifice would have been constant. <clears throat> So as it says the Rebbe, the same thing is with this lady. This lady gave her life <clears throat> to protect her children. And the, the, but the self-sacrifice of the children would be constant after the mother was gone. Now they're going to have to educate themselves. They're going to have to be educated by others. <clears throat> so says the Rebbe, that's the whole idea of why Moses said, wipe me out of your book, is in order to save others' self-sacrifice. But the Rebbe says, but after everything, what are we left with? We're left with one thing, asking God. We have to demand from God. We have to cry out to God, Ad Masai, how long is this going to go on? How can it be that after such a terrible thousands of years of exile and self-sacrifice and sacrificing and sanctifying God's name, sanctifying God's name, <clears throat> that God needed one more woman a young woman, a mother to children, she had to sacrifice her life. <clears throat> we can't understand it. It doesn't make any sense. Even if we want to say that God gets pleasure somehow or other from the death of the tzaddikim, <clears throat> like from the Beit Yosef and etc. <clears throat> but I think, says the Rebbe, that we've already had enough self-sacrifice and enough people that have given their lives through all the previous generations. <clears throat> So therefore, it's not understandable why we should be even one more moment in this terrible exile. And the Rebbe was crying when he was saying this. All right, my friends, this, God willing, we're going to finish tomorrow. Tomorrow, Friday, today is Thursday. But at 3 o'clock, we're going to learn the Haftorah 
of this week's Torah portion, which is talking about the building of the third temple. Please be with us. God bless you all. Have a good day with Mashiach now. <clears throat>